More storms possible in the eastern Pacific in the next week on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. the tropics are quiet today with no active tropical cyclones which means that uh, American viewers can rest easy on Independence Day over there 27 storms have formed so far this year around the world we are unclassified well it's not fully empty though we do have one or two areas of interest but they're not in the Atlantic it's day 34 of hurricane season here and the tropics are generally fairly quiet with a few little areas of thunderstorms in the deep tropics across the Caribbean east and western extremities. In the eastern Pacific we still have a 20% chance, I shouldn't say still because it's just become on the scene here, but we have a 20% chance of development and also the remnants of Adrian are still active although you can't see it at all on this image because it doesn't show the low level cloud enough to be able to show you Adrian, it's only just got a few little swirly low level bits now. And in the western Pacific there's nothing active here either, but there are a few thunderstorms brewing off the western uh, islands of the Philippines. And also over the Indian Ocean, no areas of interest here either, a few thunderstorms on either side of uh, the southern part of India and also attacking the coast of Myanmar and northern Thailand. But nothing that we're designating for any uh, chances of tropical cyclone development in the next uh, seven days in three of our four northern hemisphere basins. Satellite imagery from the last 24 hours looks like this and you can see a few little spots of uh, red showing the high amounts of precipitation somewhere along the coast of India, parts of the western Philippines and possibly one or two little spots near Central America. Satellite imagery in more detail looks like this, starting at Hawaii and moving eastwards. You can now see the remnants of Adrian. There they are. Beatrice, by the way, no sign of that one anymore. It really spun up quickly and died down even quicker. But this is the remnants of Adrian that survived a lot longer. Uh, there it is in some form or other. Uh, once, I, Like I said, very low level clouds, only thing that's left of this system on some satellite views. You can't see any of those clouds at all. Looking towards the more easterly part of the eastern Pacific, you can see a few little areas of convection that are starting to blow up, but nothing too sinister looking on there. But eventually you will start to see something turn up towards the south to southwest of Mexico, possibly from that little mass over there out to sea already. Uh, the Yucatan Peninsula getting a lot of storms right now, as is the coast of Honduras and Nicaragua on the uh, Caribbean side, and across the United States a few small-scale storms. Uh, around the Caribbean, uh, Lesser Antilles, a few storms over there as well, lots of precipitation, and one or two African waves about to emerge, although it's a very dry uh, main development region right now. Eastern Pacific sea surface temperatures look like this. They're still increasing in the main spots above 30 degrees Celsius off the coast of Mexico and quite expansive. The Atlantic though really starting to turn up the heat with very warm SSTs pushing th close to 32 degrees off the coast of Louisiana and also 31 to 32 degrees around the Bahamas and Florida Bay, the Florida Keys and around western Cuba. So really warm sea surface temperatures and starting to populate the eastern Atlantic with a few more yellows as well. Western Pacific really up there now as well, high latitudes getting to those 26 degrees Celsius waters now up to the coast of Japan and a line drawn eastwards all out to sea there and very warm sea surface temperatures in the deep tropics above 30 degrees in a large area. Bay of Bengal also looking okay, 30 degrees plus in a few spots. Uh, Arabian Sea in the actual ocean region, not much uh, in terms of warm SSTs, but look at those inland seas near the Arabian Peninsula, scorching hot in a few of those spots. Southwest Indian Ocean, much cooler now in the off season, only just holding on to 26 degrees in a few areas and many places falling below. Same uh, story for Australia, the Coral Sea, temperatures falling there, and the South Pacific holding on around Fiji, but New Caledonia much cooler. 
Here are the anomalies. Orange showing above average, blue showing below average. A clear low anomaly in the Eastern Pacific there out to sea, which is why Adrian didn't last very long. But in the Far Eastern Pacific, it's still got decent uh, temperatures above average. Gulf of Mexico, really above average there, pushing close to three degrees. And it's the same story there in the Eastern Atlantic, a large field of over three degrees above average. Caribbean is the hot spot in the Atlantic for oceanic heat content, but it is spilling into the Gulf of Mexico and also around the Bahamas in a few spots. Eastern Pacific, you know, I think that's actually decreased slightly in terms of the peaks, but overall coverage, I think it may have increase the average ever so slightly. Western Pacific also looking very good there in oceanic heat content, especially running up to the coast of the Philippines. This is what the GFS has thrown up then for the next five days on our computer model section, and it's the only thing that we're looking at in the short range, this potential Eastern Pacific storm. And there it is, starts to form towards the 7th, 8th of July, that's the four or five days away, um, and starts quite low latitude, moves north initially, maybe even northeast, and then starts to curve around towards the north-northwest, and then eventually towards the usual west-northwestward track, maybe even something else forming behind that. Rainfall accumulations over the next seven day period look like this and not really anything from tropical storms but along the coast of Mexico there will be a few spots that will be getting some significant amounts of rainfall. Just a note whilst we're waiting for all this to load up uh, on that potential system, looks like it's getting towards mid maybe high range tropical storm by the end of day five on the GFS. Rainfall totals then looking at around 8 inches along the coast near Guatemala, the coast of uh, Oaxaca and inland over the rest of the western coast of Mexico possibly getting up close to 8 inches as well, that's 200 millimeters and uh, locally a few high elevated spots um, in El Salvador and also in Nicaragua and Honduras getting a little bit of rainfall. But most of the heaviest rainfall of course well out to sea in that tropical zone. In the longer range then, we're still looking at the Eastern Pacific, the continuation of this next storm, there it is, peaking up and blowing up with hurricane force winds, following very much in the same footsteps as Adrian, and it looks like it survives quite a bit longer than Adrian as well. I'm not convinced by that, because sea surface temperatures fall off an absolute cliff. But at the end of that 10 day period, there is another system that definitely forms there according to the GFS model, uh, but it is a little bit far out, so I wouldn't put too much faith into that yet, one at a time, let's say and there's that next storm. That's all the serious stuff done with, that was easy. You can find us on our Force 13 merch store if you fancy. Scan the barcode and it will take you straight there with all of our usual products and probably a few more on the way. By the way, we're still waiting for Hone. In the silly range, uh, two scenarios that we're looking at. First of all, in the Eastern Pacific, a uh, continuation of that second system that becomes a stronger hurricane than the first one, although I'm quite skeptical because sea surface temperatures will still be struggling in that area that it's uh, doing well in. And maybe another system there at the back uh, towards the end of that 16 day period. It wouldn't surprise us to see a few storms rolling on up now in the Eastern Pacific. Of course, this is July, one of the peak months of the season in the Eastern Pacific. Uh, certainly when we're talking about this wave train that becomes possibly a cyclone train. And what's this? Southern Hemisphere in the South Indian Ocean. GFS holding on to the idea of a little system possibly forming there. Although having said that, the GFS has thrown up this kind of scenario for quite a few days. And it does feel quite a bit like a crying wolf situation. It's extremely rare to see a cyclone in the uh, South Indian Ocean in July. But it has happened before, and it's happened in August as well, so you can never say never, but we'll keep looking at that as the days wear on. You can talk about any of these features and anything in the tropical world on our Discord server, discord.gg slash force13 for tropical and general weather chat. We have 3,500 members from around the world. All kinds of stuff going on there. 
On this day, it was 2001 when we had one storm active, but it was a substantial typhoon, Utor, which was peaking as a 90 mile per hour category one off the coast of Luzon, very close to uh, making landfall on the mainland there, just skimming past the northern tip of Luzon. It was moving west northwestwards towards uh, China eventually, uh, and it was at its peak intensity on this day. 22 years ago. Well then, back to today, and in the Atlantic our next name is Don, in the Eastern Pacific it's Calvin, and in the Central Pacific it is still Hone. I hate that name. 27 storms so far this year. As we take a look at our next set of names, the Western Pacific, next up is Talim, in the North Indian Ocean, it is Tej. In the Southwest Indian Ocean, the names rolled over to our next year's naming list, 2023-24. And this is what it looks like in the middle. Alvaro will be the first name on that list. The Australian region, Jasper's next up. And in the South Pacific, it is Lola. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night.